First start a plane and go to geometry nodes. Click on new, delete the group input, add a spiral, set the resolution to 64, the rotation to 10, the start radius to 1.05 and the end radius to 0.05. Add a transform node, add a resample curve node, set the count to 230. Now add a set position node, add a noise texture, set it to 40 and set the W to minus 0.1. Now set the scale to 1, duplicate it and set the W to 0.1. Add a mix node, set it to color and set the factor to 0. Plug the color into B and this one into A. Plug the result into the offset of the set position node. Add a vector math node. Set the vector to minus 0.5 and now keyframe the rotation here, the W here and here and the factor. By the way, make sure you are on frame 1 when keyframing these. Set the end to 100 and the frame rate to 60. Go to frame 101. Set the set rotation to 1080 and keyframe it. Now set this to 0.1 and keyframe it. Set this one to minus 0.1 and keyframe it and set the factor to 1 and keyframe it. Select all of the keyframed nodes. Here press A and T and select linear. Add a subdivision surface node. As you can see we cannot use this on a curve so let's add a curve to mesh node. Set the level to 2. Now add a mesh to curve node. Add a cone. Set the vertices to 10 the side segments and fill segments to 32 and the radius bottom to 1.06. Duplicate the subdivision surface node and plug the mesh into the mesh and set this to 3. Let's also duplicate the subposition node, plug the vector into the offset and the mesh into the geometry. I want the curve to shrink wrap around the cone basically so let's add a geometry proximity node. Again duplicate the set position node and plug the position into the position. Duplicate the curve to mesh node and here let's use a curve circle. Set the radius to 0.05. Now add a set curve radius node. For the radius let's use a spline parameter node. Make sure to use the factor and now to invert this add a reverse curve node. Here let's also check fill caps. Duplicate the subdivision surface node that we set to 2 and put it here. Add a joint geometry node. Take this geometry and plug it in here. Let's also add a set shade smooth node. Add a set material node. Duplicate it and put it here. In the material properties create two new materials. Select the first one here and the second one here. Let's save now. Take the UV map output of the cone and plug it into the group output. Now press N and go to group and go to UV map and copy the name. In the output attributes paste the name in here and hit enter. Let's save now and go to shading. Go into rendered view. You can find a link to this HDI in the description. Set the strength to 2.5. In the render properties go to film and make it transparent and enable transparent glass. Under color management set the fuel transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. Make sure to set these settings back to the default settings before compiling the images. Make sure the second material is selected. This material is based on a material made by Ryan King. I'm going to put an info card to his videos here. Set the metallic to 1 and the roughness to 0.27. Add a color ramp. For the black I'm going to use this hex code and for the white I'm going to use this one. Plug the color into the base color. Add a mask wave texture and press Ctrl T. Delete the texture coordinate and add an attribute node. Now let's paste this name in here. Now if we Ctrl Shift click on the node we have the UV map here. Plug the vector into the vector and the height into the factor here. Set the scale to 1000 and the detail to 15. Set the dimension to 0. Plug the vector into the normal and add a noise texture. Set the scale to 12 and the detail to 15. Now add a bump node. Let's disconnect this and use the factor for the height. Set the strength to 0.008. Select the first material. Delete the principal BSDF and add a glass BSDF and Ctrl Shift click on it. Now let's save again and go back to layout mode. Press delete then one on the numpad. Add a camera and press Ctrl or 0 to go into camera view and press G and Z and move it up. Now enable a snapping. Set it to face project. Add an empty plane axis 
and press G and put it here. Now select the camera and go to the object data properties and enable depth of field. Select the empty. Let's go to rendered view. Set the f-stop to 0.2 and the blades to 16. Now let's save and press F12. Close this window and go to compositing. Enable use nodes and denoising data and add a denoise node. Control shift click on the node and now press shift and right click and drag over here. Add an alpha over node. Plug the image into the bottom socket. Here I'm going to use this hex code. Add a color balance node. I'll put the hex codes for these on screen. Duplicate the alpha over node and again use the bottom socket and make this black. Add a box mask. Plug the mask into the factor. Now set this to 0.9 and this to 0.45. Add a blur node. Set the X and Y to 300. Now add a mix node. Go to the texture properties. Click on new and select clouds. Set the size to 0 and here let's use a texture node. Set the factor to 0.03. In the output property select an output folder. I'm going to use JPEG with the quality set to 100%. If you want to speed up the render you can go to the render properties and go to performance and enable persistent data. Just be careful with this because it can use a lot of memory. And you can also go here and enable lock interface. Now save again and press Ctrl F12. Feel free to like and subscribe. If you liked this tutorial then you're probably also going to like the one that is on screen now. I'll see you next time.